Now, I have had the privilege of interviewing Jatin Chowdhury. Now, he's the guy behind the Chow DSP plugins on the App Store, and these are all free plugins. So far, he's made five of them, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about the guy behind all of these awesome plugins. Now, before we dig into all of this, I want to start out with this anecdote from Jatin. You see, I asked him, why didn't you just name your company Chow DSP? I mean, it's in all of your app logos anyway. Well, it turns out it's a mistake. This is what he said. When I was filling out all of the App Store things to be a developer on the App Store, I couldn't quite figure out how to get, like where they tell you to put your company name and your developer name and the different things like that uh, got a little confusing. And so I ended up uh, with that name as the developer name or whatever shows up on the app store there. And I'm not totally sure how to change it now. Uh. <laughs> now, this makes me question every other company on the app store where I've seen regular names being used as company names. Maybe they did the same thing. I don't know. Either way, hello there, dear viewers, and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack. I'm your host. And in this video, you get to fill your bellies with some chow. Uh, yeah, it's, the, the joke is getting tired. I've already used it in the title and in the thumbnail. Let's just roll intro. So what has Jatin brought to the table of iOS music apps? Well, he's made the Chow Centaur, which is a clone pedal emulation. He's also made a build your own distortion playground. Now this is sick. On top of that, he's also made a very interesting kick drum engine, which is powered by weird filtering. Then there is Chow Matrix, which is this bonkers type of delay plugin in where you can pretty much set up your own delay and then you can modulate it. It looks really trippy and I love it. And lastly, he's also made Chow Tape Model, which is an emulation of a tape machine. Whenever I start trying to make a plugin, it's because I have something that I want to use for my own music playing or recording or whatever. So, for example, with the tape plugin, it kind of started because I, I had this tape machine, but it's old and it always breaks down and it's really heavy, so I can't like carry it places or anything like that. So I, I decided, okay, well, maybe I'll try to make a plugin that doesn't have to sound exactly like it, but you know, if I can get pretty close, then I'll be happy with that. And at the same time, I was also taking a class on uh, physical modeling, signal processing, and I needed like a research project. So for the research project, I was like, OK, I'll try to make a plugin that sounds like my tape machine. And, and then as I started researching, I, I found that there wasn't a lot of existing research for that type of physical modeling. Uh, and so at that point, it also became a bit of a research project where I was also trying to develop some new algorithms for uh, that type of effect. And then I actually wrote a paper about the tape plugin and, and was able to publish it. So the plugin sort of became a mixed thing where it was partly supporting material for the paper and then also just something that I could use myself. Now, I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that Chow Tape Model is probably the most powerful tape emulation plugin on the App Store. Just look at this thing. You have everything you could possibly want in a plugin like this. It is chock full with features. You got the gain page, filter page, the stereo page, tape page, compression page, tone page, loss page, degrade page, and you've even got tape chew. And lastly, you've got control over flutter and wow. This thing sounds really authentic. I know because I too own a reel-to-reel -reel recorder, but my machine is also prone to just breaking down. It needs constant servicing and tuning, and it just weighs a ton, and it's not fun to lug around. So having something like Chow Tape Model for free is pretty mind-blowing to me.
Now, I don't know about you, but me personally, I'd pay some really good money for the tape machine. And so I'm, of course, curious, why does Jatin put out all of his apps out there on the App Store for free? I had to ask him, and this is what he said. This is sort of a bigger conversation, but I think that in a lot of parts of the sort of research academic world, it's very easy to, to get things disconnected from like how the research ends up getting used in the, the real world or like a real world implementation. And so for me, when I'm doing research, having like a, a plug in example or a real use case uh, is really nice for sort of keeping me like grounded in the stuff that I'm working on within the realm of things that are actually useful. And so like with that in mind, I, I like to have the plugins as sort of like supporting material for, for that research. And so because of that, I don't think it really makes sense to, to charge for it. It seems like a good way to do research to me, if that makes sense. Now, while interviewing Jatin, I discovered that the guy likes playing the guitar. And so it makes sense that he would have some guitar pedal emulations in his portfolio. This is the Chao Centaur. It's a free clone emulation. You know, that pedal that guitarists all over the world will break their neck over just trying to get one. Well, you don't have to. Even if you find one, it will be expensive. So why not just download a free emulation of it? Now, if you are into guitar stuff, which I'm not really, but I still use guitar pedals to distort my vocals and my synthesizers. Well, if you are like me, then you should definitely check out another free one by Jatin, which is BYOD. It stands for Build Your Own Distortion. And that's literally what you get to do in here. And there's so much to choose from. Up here, you can save your own presets. And if we go to Chow and Default, you'll end up with an empty slate. I'm gonna tap on the input of the output to remove this cable. And then we can either long press in the gray area to get this list, or we can also press on the plus up here. And if we go to drive, then we can see that we have a bunch of different drive effects. Classical stuff like metal face, muff drive, and Jatin has even put in his centaur in here. So let's add that. Long press again go into tone where we can find all kinds of filters. And here I'm going to put in a muff tone. Then we're going to go into utility where we can find a bunch of utility modules. Add an oscilloscope because I love that. And lastly, we're going to go to the other category where we can find some FX and processors. And here I'm going to choose a compressor. Now to connect all this up, we just have to tap down and hold on an output of a module and attach it to the input of a module. Just like this and this and this and this and of course the oscilloscope. And there we go. And when it starts filling up on the screen, we can zoom out over here. We can also zoom in if we want, but I want to zoom out and get everything in a neat little line over here. It looks very nice. Up here, we can control the input and output volumes and also the dry wet setting. And if we look here, we can see that BYOD has been set to mono. But if we're working with stereo material, we can just flip it over to that. And there we go. I'm having a hard time believing that something like this can be completely free, but it is. Part of the reason why it's free and, and open source and all that is that that one, probably more so than any of my other uh, plugins, is using a bunch of other people's code as well. And so that's a big thing behind the idea of being open source. Like, yeah, there's some of my code and algorithms and, and whatever, but there's actually some code from Surge in there. The, uh, the Wave Shaper module is, is all Surge code. And then there's some other code that was contributed from my friend Dirk and my friend Sam for, for some of the other modules. So yeah, that's part of the reason why it's free and open source. Sort of a, a more collaborative effort, and there's code from 
you know, a bunch of different sources, which I think is really cool as well. And I'm, I'm hoping that more people will, will contribute too. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. All right, so not only does Jatin make sure that his code is open source, free and available for anyone to use, he also uses other people's open source free code in his own apps. And so that brings up a question about licensing. And so I asked him, how do you deal with that? So that kind of differs from app to app. And there's several layers of complexity here, and I, I'm really not an expert. So this is just like my very base level knowledge. But basically, I think all of the code I've released is either under the GPL license or the BSD license. And so the GPL licensed code you can use for free in other open source projects, and that's no problem. The BSD licensed code you can use in open source or in commercial projects without any problems. The problem is that the App Store doesn't allow you to release GPL code or apps that are licensed under the GPL uh, into the App Store. So what I had to do for the apps that are otherwise GPL is dual license them. So the main plugin code is, is GPL and then just the iOS part of it is, uh, or the iOS wrapper part of it is like BSD. And I think that's okay, or at least no one's, no one's complained to me about it, so. <laughs> Now, while interviewing Jatin, I did, of course, ask him about his coding history. And I, of course, wanted to know if he was doing all of this alone. We now know that that isn't the case, but I wondered if there was like a team or a close group of friends he was working with. And we're going to get into that. But first, I want to highlight this app right here. It's called Chow Matrix. It's a crazy tripped out tap delay. And you can have up to 50 taps in here. I'm not kidding. If we go to the presets list, go into user here and load my hack 50 well that's what it looks like it looks like this beautiful tree and when you're moving these nodes you're actually moving them not only in the stereo field but you're also moving their delay time and if we press these three buttons here and choose both views, we can see that there's a ton of parameters that we can change for all 50 nodes. And if we go down here, yeah, there's even more. There's a lot we can do. And if we close this view and open only the matrix view, we can make all of this become even more trippy by pulling this fader here all the way towards the crazy guy. Yeah, and look at that. It's one of those apps that make you go, whoa, dude. So I asked Jatin about his programming history and I wasn't really expecting the answer I got. Actually, my, my brother was studying computer science at the time and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to learn programming. It doesn't seem that useful or whatever. And then uh, I, I decided I would uh, start studying electrical engineering and they were like, oh, you have to take a programming class. And so I did. And I actually really enjoyed it. And, and I've kind of sort of been building on that ever since. I started learning maybe in 2015 and then I really started working on plugins probably like 2017 or maybe even 2018. Yeah. Let me add that Jatin was telling me all of this with a big, big grin on his face. So what about Chow DSP? How many people are involved? Right now it's just me. I do uh, most of the coding and sort of development. There was another fellow who contributed a couple of designs to the tape plugin and the uh, Chow Matrix plugin. He, he did a lot of uh, really good work on that. Figuring out how to visualize things in a way that wasn't overwhelming with information. And then there's just a bunch of other sort of like open source contributors who will pitch in a little bit of code now and then or, or do some testing and raise uh, an issue or a bug report or something like that. And so that's that's super helpful, too. Now there's one more app we need to talk about and that is Chow Kick. This is a kick drum synthesizer and it is a bit weird because it's using a weird filtering technique or filter behavior. And Jatin actually wrote a paper about that and him doing that actually ended up with him contributing code to Surge XT. You'll hear more about it in a little while, but first let's just have a quick look at Chow Kick because there's this one feature in here that I forgot to mention back when I was featuring it in my top list for drum synthesizers from 2021. 
if you look down here, you can see that it says res mode. And this has to do with the resonance curve. And right now it's set to linear. But if we set it to basic, it sounds like this. And if we set it to bouncy, we get that. What's so interesting with Chow Kick is that it doesn't quite work like regular kick drum synthesizers. And it's pretty much because of that weird filtering inside this app. Which is why I think it's so much fun to work with this thing, because I'm also exploring it at the same time, and I'm able to create some really good drums with it. Whenever I talk to an app developer, I always ask them about future plans, goals, and also how they actually go about making apps. I don't know that there really is a goal. I think I'm just doing it because I enjoy it and it's it's fun for me. And you know, if I have an idea and it's like, oh, this is you know, would be a cool plugin, then I'll make it. Uh, <laughs> for me, it's kind of similar to how I make music, where I have a hard time sort of like sitting down and forcing myself to uh, like, okay, today I'm going to write a song about this, or today I'm going to, you know, write a song where it's, you know, a guitar song or something. I, I kind of just have to like sit around and wait and jam or whatever, and then eventually I'll get an idea and it's like, okay, this is a cool song, and then, you know, I, I can go ahead and finish that and do whatever with it. Um, developing plugins or software in general is kind of the same, where you know, I just sit around and don't do much and then I'll have an idea and then it's like, oh, okay, maybe this will work and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And then if it works, then I try to, you know, go through and finish it. If it doesn't, then I save it for a rainy day. Surge XT is an incredibly powerful open source synthesizer for desktop and laptop computers. There might even be a Linux port of it Either way, it's completely free and it's very, very, very powerful. It has everything you could possibly want. And it would be cool if it could get ported over to iOS, something I did actually ask Jatin about, but you'll have to stick around for that answer. First up, let's hear what Jatin has to say about how he even got involved with Surge XT. There's the uh, cutoff warp and the resonance warp filters, I think are what they're called in Surge. And basically what had happened was um, I had written a paper about doing some nonlinear filters. You take sort of a normal digital filter structure and then you put some weird shaped functions in different places in the filter structure. And then you can get some interesting sounds and sort of strange filter behavior. And actually in, in the kick plugin, that's sort of what it's based around as well. Yeah, basically I'd written that paper and then one of the other developers working on Surge, I think it was Luna, had found that paper and had started implementing those filters in Surge. And then one of the other Surge developers had contacted me and then I just started looking at some of their work and I had seen their code before, but the, the way the project was structured was a little bit more old school. So the, the original Surge source code predates Juice and predates like a lot of the newer C++ frameworks that, that people are working with today. And so at the time it was like, oh, I don't think I really want to try building it just because it's sort of an older build system. But some of the developers had been working on upgrading that. And so when I uh, started hearing about the filters, I was like, oh, okay, I want to try them. And so I tried building Surge. And uh, from there, I've been in touch with the, the Surge developers. I only know these people by their uh, their GitHub usernames and their Discord usernames. Uh, so there's Bacon Paul, who does uh, a lot of the development work, and then another fellow who goes by the name Evil Dragon, who, who does quite a bit as well. Uh, and then there's a bunch of others like me who just pop in, help out for a little bit. Now, I borrowed an old MacBook from my partner. It's from 2013, and it's, yeah, it's really getting old. But it is actually able to run Surge. And I had a good long look at Surge, and man, do I want this thing to be ported over to iOS. And so, yes, I did ask Jatin if they would ever port over this thing onto iOS, and, well, this is what he said. 
they had ported Surge to using Juice maybe a few months ago now, and uh, we had been talking about maybe trying to do some kind of iOS version. It probably couldn't be released on the App Store because of the licensing thing. So Surge is GPL, and a lot of the code is, is from you know many years ago. And so if you wanted to do like a dual licensing thing, like I've been doing with my plugins, we'd have to track down like all of the contributors over the years, make sure they're okay with the, the whole dual licensing thing. So. I don't think it could be released on the App Store, but I, I'd been someone had been telling me about like a different way of distributing iOS apps, like the way that companies do it for like internal testing. And so they were like, oh, if you could get that working, uh, it would be great. All right, so don't lose your shit yet because I want you to take all of this with a grain of salt. You see, when developers talk about projects, future projects and stuff like that, they think about what can be done if something can be done. And in this case, it, it could be done. The problem is licensing. And as you heard, even if they port search over to iOS, it probably couldn't be done in an official way where it actually gets placed on the App Store. So the way you should view this is it's never going to happen. And if it does, it will be a very welcome surprise. Now I'm about to round this up, but first I just want to bring your attention to these. These are tip jars. And so if you download them and you use them, why don't you send him a fiver or something? Lastly, I want to say thank you so much for 40k subs. It wouldn't have happened without you. If you like this video, if you like tutorials and you want to see more of them, why don't you press that thumbs up? And if you didn't like the video, press the thumbs down. But remember, if you do press the thumbs down, that means that you're admitting that you're a poopy poop head. Don't be a poopy poop head. Now, if you want to support the work I do here on the channel, other than just thumbing the videos up, then comment down below. Do you have Jatin's apps or did you know about them before you saw this video? If you have his apps, why don't you tell us all, read in the comment section down there what you think of them. Now, you can always share my videos too, that's super helpful. And if you want to support me in a financial way, check out my music first. There's a full list of links down below. And if you don't want to do that, you can send me a fiver over at PayPal or you can sign up over at my Patreon. And if you don't want to do any of it, that's fine too. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. Mm -hmm.